hello 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 welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is Krista come stick around stay for a while yes I used to be into makeup now I'm more into like the nail life um, I really enjoy doing acrylics so if you want to watch me do this a Valentine's Day set then kick back relax grab a snack because we're getting into this so I really liked how this set came out um, you'll see in the video that the pinky nail I had like an ombre on it at first but once I was done with like the rest of the nails I didn't like how that pink um, the pinky looked so I changed it out in the end which you'll see but right here I'm just pretty much filing um, I wanted to do like that tapered square shape it already it already had it but I just wanted to be crispy and sharp you guys know me and my crispy and sharpness um, like my last video I just like my nails to look really bomb and I really love doing long nails I'm not so much of a fan of doing short nails um, believe it or not short nails are way harder to do than long nails and I don't know what it is I mean I'm pretty sure other nail techs can agree with me but I really enjoy doing the long longer nails you know so here I am starting out with the pinky and like I said before I did change it but let's just let's just take a moment and appreciate how good this ombre came out I have been struggling with doing ombre for like a while now and TikTok has helped me learn how to get like that nice blend um, so yeah, I really liked how the ombre came out. I just didn't like the cover color that I used because it didn't really match the set I was going for. I wanted to do like a lot of light pink colors and the cover color I used was the Mia Secret, I believe the beige cover and it looked more peachy in the end. So yeah, see, you can see the difference right here. It doesn't really look different right now, but when you see them all together, you'll understand what I mean. But when you're doing ombre... Um, I the mistake I used to make was I would lay down like how the pink color is and then when I wanted to do like the cuticle color I would start at the cuticle and then blend down and I, I always wondered why I would have that harsh line but I never did that middle bead when doing the ombre which I do now because you can see like look at that blend it is beautiful and I just I struggled with it for a long time and I'm so happy that I learned how to do it so my next video I'm probably gonna incorporate an ombre nail that way you guys can see like the method that I use now but everybody's different everybody does their own thing this is just what really works for me and I was really in love with the process of doing this ombre nail I didn't really get to see it after it was encapsulated because I just threw it away but wait on my next set it's gonna be really cute also, another thing that I didn't really understand about ombre is that when you swipe the color down, like the cover color or like let's say the cuticle color over the tip color, I didn't know if you could swipe it all the way down. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to cover the color that's on the tip. Does this even make sense? I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Um, I think you do. But understandably to my, like how I do it, um, I feel like you can swipe over your bottom color, just don't, like, don't do a thick layer swiped over. You know what I mean? Like, thin it out and then swipe over. Um, now, any tips on when you encapsulate the clear nail? So, let's say you have the glitter tip, but the under, the tip is clear. <laughs> I sound like a tongue twister, but the tip is clear. Are you able to swipe that cover color all the way down? I'm not sure about that. I want to try it myself and see what works, but I just don't want to cover that clear tip. You know what I mean? I want it to be like glass. I don't want it to be foggy. So yeah, any nail tips? Got any tips? I'll let your girl know. I'm still learning. I don't know everything. I just like to do what works for me and I try to test things out. There was a point when I just did a whole set of straight marbling because I want to get that marbling technique down 
and I think I pretty much got it. I know I do need more practice, but um, I was loving how the set came out. If you haven't seen already, check out my TikTok. I have it on there, but you can see like the different colors that I use to marble. And I was just playing around with like all these different colors and it just looked really pretty. Um, but yeah, here I am painting this whole nail. Um, oh, actually I did do the French tip here. So as you can see, the French tip didn't give it the shape that I wanted. So while the acrylic was still a little bit wet, I kind of got my little cuticle pusher, but the other side of it, and I was angling how I wanted it. I know it looks very wrinkly right here, but in the end it comes out so bomb. Um, I did lay a little bit of acrylic over that little lump. And after I filed it down before I added like the tip, and it just came out beautiful. It came out wonderful. I really do need to practice my French tip um, or like a deep French tip or a V cut or all that because I really do want to get better at it because I love how they look. But in the end, you will see how beautiful it came out. Like you guys need to trust the process. It may look ugly from the start, but you don't know how it's going to turn out in the end. Um, I always think that and I just want to stop. But I keep going and finish my set and then in the end, like I really end up falling in love with my set. And as you can see here, I am doing the marbling. So I was using the Mia Secret um, cover, no not cover pink, it was just the pink acrylic. And I mixed it in with the Mia Secret pink pearl. You guys, this combo, chef's kiss, immaculate. I love how this marble came out. Um, but basically for my marbling, I'm gonna do like a whole video on how I marble. Um, I'm not saying I'm a pro, not saying I'm an expert, I know that. Um, but what I like to do is a girl on TikTok said to keep your bead watery, like not too watery, but watery enough to where you can move it around. So I like to lay my bead down and then I add the little mix that I'm gonna mix. I wipe my brush off, make it flat, and I try to get it like from the bottom of the bead and flip it around and then just kind of like diagonally go back and forth um, and make that marble effect. Um, I feel like if you're a nail tech, you'll understand the language I'm speaking right now. But um, yeah, I just, I really like this method. But a big tip is, like I said, keep your acrylic a little bit more watery instead of like a very firm bead because that's gonna help you a lot. Well, I know that it helps me because when I have the firm beads, it doesn't really want to mix and then it just gets all bumpy. Especially in the end when you're trying to file. Like you see right here, I flipped it to the top and then I diagonally went back and forth and just let it fall. And then you just kind of want to smooth out that little lump on the tip, like blend it with the rest. It looks ugly, trust me, before you encapsulate. But in the end, when it's encapsulated, it's filed, it's buff, it's beautiful. I am in love with the marbling and I just, I really want to get bomb at it. Um, but yeah, marbling is like the most satisfying but messiest thing you could do. But like in the end it comes out really bomb. So yeah. So for this set, I like I said, I wanted to stick more to like the baby pinks. I haven't done a Valentine's Day set that is pink yet. Um, I know I did red. And I think that was the, oh no, and I did purple. But the baby pink, it had to be done. Like I love baby pink sets. I love soft colors. I also love my super vibrant colors, but I kind of want to put out more stuff that um, clients are going to request. You know what I mean? Because like I could do all these crazy looks, but it doesn't mean people are going to want them. You know, because some people, they like more simple acrylics. Like they like the French tip, they like the pink and white ombre, they like just one solid nude color and people stick more to the lighter colors, which I see. So yeah, I kind of want to put um, content out there that clients can relate to and clients can, you know, be like, hey, I seen this girl on YouTube and I like how she did this set. Can you do it on me? You know what I mean? Um, for the marble, I did do two layers because I want it to be like really 3D. So like you can see the marble in the back. Like you'll see when I'm done, but you can see the marble behind the marble. And I think that looks really cool. So that's what I did there. For the pinky, I did do a super thin layer of the pink. Um, 
the pink that I'm using is the acrylic that I made, but yeah, I didn't really bother with really laying it down too much. I just wanted something that the glitter can stick to. And you guys, this glitter is so beautiful. Ugh, in the end, oh my goodness, I did not expect it from this glitter. But once it's encapsulated and all that, it looks really pretty. Like, it doesn't look like it would really be much when I'm laying it down. But you can really see the colors through the encapsulation at the end. And I was so in love with this nail. Even my husband was like, dang, that looks real professional. So, yeah, just stay tuned for the end. Trust the process, y'all. And now I don't think I mentioned it, but the glitter that I used, it, um, the glitter I used, I got it from a local beauty store. So, uh, yeah. Um, also, okay, so you see how the clip jumped and my pinky nails already changed. That French tip nail had the hearts encapsulated in it already. I was so mad. Okay, so my phone had died while I was recording and I thought, it was like recording the whole thing. Turns out, no, it didn't record it. But basically what I did, like I said, I did take off the pinky nail. I added one color on the pinky nail, like that pink color that I'm using on all the fingers. And then I kind of did like a glittery trail. Like you can see it starts at the top and it goes down. And what I added was little Playboy bunnies, holographic butterflies, and like those little pink sparkly sparkles. <laughs> Um, it did come out really cute. I really did like it. I do want to do that nail again on a different video with a different technique, but I really do like how it came out. Um, also, the French tip encapsulation. Oh my goodness. Do you see that curve where the hearts meet the pink color? It, it came out so nice. I was so happy with it. I love how it looks with the little hearts encapsulated. It's just so girly and cute. Um, so I really like how this nail came out. My favorite one, well actually they're all my favorite because I really like a little bit of something out of all of them, but my favorite has to be the French tip because that was like my very first time actually doing a French tip, like actually really trying. And well, she's cute, she's a cutie. But that little pinky nail, she's cute too. She looks really cute. But right here, I'm just encapsulating all my nails with the Mia Secret um, Transparent and this one is like glass. I really like it. I go back and forth between the YN or the Young Nails Clear Acrylic and the Mia Secret Transparent. Um, I'm not sure why. I noticed that obviously you're not supposed to mix like monomer with a different brand which I was doing for a while but I didn't realize it. So I was mixing like the YN monomer with the Mia Secret Acrylic um, I didn't really have like too many issues. It was working fine, but I noticed when I was encapsulating that my acrylic wasn't laying down very smooth. And I feel like a big thing for when you want that nail to look like even and it kind of settles, but it settles all like in one layer instead of having bumps, I would say stick to the same brands because right here I did stick with the Mia Secret Monomer and the Mia Secret Transparent and I had to do filing um, but not as much as I would have if I used the YN Monomer with the Mia Secret Transparent. Don't get me wrong, YN is bomb. YN combination like the Monomer with the clear or with the cover or any other like acrylic from YN is good. And same with Mia Secret. I feel like Mia Secret is just as good. But my recommendation is stick with brands within brands. So if you're gonna use YN, you, uh, use YN monomer. If you're gonna use Mia Secret, use Mia Secret monomer. Um, that was one of the mistakes. So just wanted to, I just wanna talk about my mistakes that I make because hopefully it helps out other beginner nail techs and their mistakes. I feel like we can all help each other with little tips and tricks like without getting offended, you know what I mean?
because I want to learn a lot of things like I want this to be my career I used to love makeup so much but ever since getting into acrylics and stuff I just love the process it's so relaxing and I don't know if you guys can relate to me but just laying down the acrylic and making your designs and just seeing your outcome in the end it just really motivates me to keep going keep getting better keep doing better you know what I mean um, right here I was out of focus but I was cleaning off my brush but yeah if you guys can relate to me like let me know because I just from here I just want to keep getting better I learn something new every day when it comes to nails I just really enjoy it um, right here I was using my safety bit on my hand my little silicone hand but it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do so I ended up changing it out to my ceramic safety bit. You'll see in a few clips over. Because um, I kind of like the ceramic one because it has more of a point to it. I feel like the safety bit ball that I'm using, that's good for like before the nails are on for the cuticles. This one is good to like kind of break if you have like a messy, not so much a messy application, but the acrylic drips onto the side of the nail. I mean, I guess that's messy, right? This takes care of it like right away and it doesn't hurt your client doesn't burn them just make sure you don't hold it down in one spot for too long um, any of the say any of the bits that I use or anything in this video that I use is pretty much on Amazon um, I do have an Amazon storefront so I will link that down below for you guys so you can find what I use in the video but I highly recommend this bit because it has saved me so many times um, and it's not uncomfortable for the client. Like, I can't stress that enough. Like, I literally ask my clients, like, is this hurting you? Like, are you uncomfortable? Does it burn? And they're just like, no, girl. Like, you're good. I would say something. So, yeah, that says a lot. But this one really gets the job done. And it gets into that acrylic. And it kind of helps with lifting because you get to file down. I wouldn't say closer, but you get to file down that cuticle area without having to worry about cutting your customers. I know that I was very feel fearful of that when I first started. Like I was very fear fearful, oh my God, I can't even say it. I was very fearful of using a drill in general. Um, but I feel like a good tip for me that someone had told me is practice on yourself and use the like, use the different bits and see how it feels. That way you know like what your customer feels. And there were times when I thought, you know, this bit is okay, but when I used it on myself, I was just like, oh my God, that actually hurts. So when you get a feel for it on yourself, you know what to use and you know what works for you. Um, like this white bit, it never hurt me. It was very, very gentle to me compared to most cuticle bits. So I really enjoy using this one. Um, I bought a ton of like just different bits for my drill and I just end up using like two or three of them. So I probably have like 15, but I only use two or three of them. I thought I needed all these different things, like all these different bits just to file down my nail. But it turns out that it was the way I was laying my acrylic. So the reason why I got all these different bits was because I wanted to like get out the lumps and the bumps in the acrylic. Um, but it's because I wasn't laying my acrylic down nicely. It was kind of, I had so many bumps when like in the beginning, I couldn't understand why. And I was trying to find like so many videos about like how to get lumps and bumps out of your stuff, out of your nail. But every time I Googled that, something would come up about a good application. And that didn't click until I finally watched one. And I realized that gravity is your best friend when doing acrylic application, especially when encapsulating or doing the top layer, because that's gonna define, it's not gonna define how your nail turns out in the end before filing, but it's gonna define how nice your nails are going to look. So, yeah, I learned that, not, I mean, everybody learns. Everybody learns, it's nothing to be embarrassed about because we all, I feel like everyone that has become a nail tech has gone through all of this. And I get questions on my TikTok like, Hey, how do I not get um, bumpy acrylic? Like, how do I, how do I get a smooth application? And that's when I like, I like to give advice. I like to help people, you know.
different. I really love how my nails have been turning out when I let gravity do the work. So that's key. Let gravity do the work. Make sure the nail is being pointed down towards like your desk or whatever you are. Like especially when you're working on a client. And get your bead to a perfect amount of consistency and lay it down and let it do its thing. Just guide the bead where to go and once you see that the bead has stopped, then kind of blend it out and go on with your next bead on that part. Um, if you guys want, I will do a video on acrylic application. I am no way, shape or form saying I am a pro, but I just want to show you guys what works for me. So let me know. And the safety bit that I'm using right here, it's a ceramic safety bit. I don't want to say it's a five in one, but I could be wrong. Um, I know that I want to purchase a five in one, but I might already have it. I don't know guys, but this one is also in my Amazon storefront. Um, I'll link it below, like I said earlier, but this one helps me get close to like the cuticle area too. Also, like let's say I want to kind of file out the top layer of the cuticle um, it helps me do that it helps me get pretty close and this drill bit is like a medium grit I want to say I know there's like a fine extra fine medium coarse I think it's medium I'm pretty sure it's medium but it does help me take off the excess acrylic that I don't want on the nail like really fast and especially with the drill that I have um, I finally upgraded I used to have a what is the one from Amazon called the Melody Susie I used to have the Melody Susie drill the one that's like 18 or 19 dollars and let's just say you get what you pay for like my hand used to hurt so much after doing a set of nails and then I upgraded to a Koopa drill and you guys like what a difference what a freaking difference if you have the money and you want to upgrade don't invest into like i don't, I don't want to say kara sky don't invest in kara sky if that's what you want get it but invest into something that's a little bit more expensive because it's more of like an investment instead of you feeling like oh i'm wasting my money and all that no it's an investment trust me and the drill that you get and like not the more expensive but the more the better the brand, the better your nails are going to come out. I see a huge difference in my nails since I started using this drill. Like it is so easy to file down the acrylic. Um, all you have to do is apply like a little pressure. When I used to apply pressure with my Melody Susie drill, it would stop. And that means that the drill didn't have enough power to keep going like as you're applying pressure. Does that make sense? Um, but this one, this one will just like... It runs through everything so easily, so quickly. It makes your nails look like butter. So I highly recommend a Koopa Drill. Um, I heard Kara Sky is good. I heard, I'm not sure what other ones, but those are the ones that I've mainly heard about. I heard the YN one is good, but I, I don't know, like don't, don't hold me accountable to that because I don't know. But Koopa has been amazing to me. And you just charge it it's cordless um, I think the one I got was passport the passport one and it's the unicorn color so yeah it's really cute it looks really cute on my desk like hey look at my Koopa drill no I'm just kidding <laughs> um, okay so right here this is another bit that I really love but I don't love the tip of it because the tip is very sharp it is so sharp so I got another one similar to this it's an extra fine bit and this is what kind of helps get all the like the little rumplies out of your nail um, but the tip of it is just very flat so I got one that's carbide and it has like the safety bit tip so it's like rounded and I like that one a lot more especially to use on my clients because when I was doing my own sets I would literally either nick my cuticle or one time the drill kinda ran off my nail and it ended up slicing my finger Okay, like you guys need to be so careful, especially with the flap tips, especially if you're a beginner. I'm pretty sure like a pro could handle this bit, but girl, I was so scared of this bit. Um, I don't know why I used it in this video, to be honest. I should have grabbed my carbide one, but it worked. So it is what it is. And then I go in with my extra fine sanding band. 
and I like to use this after I use the extra fine um, like regular bit because I notice sometimes when I'm doing the extra fine like the white bit the one before this I get little lines in my nails um, on the top and the sanding band just kind of sands out all the lines obviously because it's a sanding band but it sands out all those lines so it's like as if you're buffing a car in a way does that make sense that's how I explained it to my husband so like you know how when you buff out scratches or something that's what this does and I didn't realize how good sanding bands were until I seen so many people that do bomb applications of acrylic and they use a sanding band in the end and their nails look like butter like when I say butter, I mean when the light reflects off your nails and you have that straight light line. So that's what kind of gives off if you have a bomb set or if your acrylic application is kind of rumbly. So when you take your pictures and you notice that line of light hitting your nail and it's straight, that means your acrylic is buttery. That means your acrylic is like on point perfect. But when your lines are kind of like rumbly and like not straight at all, that's how you know that you need to work on your application. I've been there. I've done that. I still do that sometimes. I think it's just normal. Um, but I can tell you that this has definitely made it better. Like this sanding band. So don't underestimate the sanding bands. You don't always need those drill bits. Sometimes you don't need them at all if your application is that good. You just kind of like got to buff the nail and stuff. But you don't need all these uh, like the sets of bits and all that I probably I didn't I wouldn't say I regret buying them because I did learn a lot of things from each bit but I mainly go for my aka five in one bit that I think is a five in one bit but I doubt that it is I go for that one I go for my cuticle one the white one and then I go for the extra fine one but the carbide one because it's better and then I go for my sanding band. Um, sometimes I don't even go for the five in one because my application was flat enough to where I don't have to. So then instead of going in with the extra fine sanding band, I'll go in with a more coarse sanding band. So I would say like an 80 grit, but do not use an 80 grit on a naked nail, only on acrylic because you're gonna hurt your customer. So I use an 80 drill bit in order to file down like um, what I want sometimes it just depends it depends on your application it depends on a lot of things but yeah so I use the 80 bit and then sometimes I just use like 180 I think the grit is on the sanding band the softest one the extra fine one and that's it really um, it just like I said it depends on your application it depends on how you laid your acrylic sometimes I need my five in one sometimes I don't it just like I said, it depends. So as you can see, I am going in with my Tammy Taylor file, the peel and stick file. It is in my Amazon storefront, so if you wanted to get it, it's pretty bomb. I really like it, especially using it on clients because it's very sanitary. You just take one file off and you put one file on. So I just wanna make sure like my sides of my nails are very straight, very crispy, because you don't want no curve where the nail meets the cuticle does that make sense that straight line down on the side of the nail no curves at all and make sure when you are filing you support your nail <laughs> I say that as my nails falling out of my hand but like when you're doing a client obviously not a freaking fake hand um, make sure you're supporting the nail that way your client isn't uncomfortable I know there's been times when I go to the salon and after my nails are done my nails hurt so bad and then on top of that, like you start hitting your nails in places or you hit it the wrong way and then your nail just starts hurting from then on and then that's when you want to take your nails off. So be very gentle with your clients. Don't do what I'm doing here with my hand. It's just because like I know it's not a client. I think, I don't know, but I don't do this with my clients, I promise. Okay, um, but make sure you're supporting that nail. Like hold it from the nail bed and hang on to it while you're filing because you don't want your client to be in pain. You don't want them to not come back to you. Um, and then also what I like to do is flip the hand around and see it from the client's point of view. Again, I learned that from 
what is her name? V Nailed It here on YouTube. So check her out. She has bomb nails. Oh my God, to be on her level, I would be so happy. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But yeah, so just kind of flip the hand around. You'll see me do it. I think I put it in here. I'm not sure. But flip the hand around. Make sure the tip is super sharp, super straight, super pretty. And just keep it very crispy because that's what's going to show your work. That's what's going to show your bomb nails. And yeah, I talked throughout this whole entire video. Um, it's pretty much almost over now. But I hope you guys like my talk throughs. If not, next video I'll just play music. Let me know because I do like to give tips and tricks. I do like to talk about what I'm doing and my techniques that I use. If you want me to go more in depth like on what I'm doing and every step of the way, let me know. Like I said, I am no professional, but this is what works for me. And if you guys are nail techs and you're on TikTok or even on here on YouTube or Instagram, follow me. Let's be friends. I usually follow all the nail techs back because I like to see everyone else's work. And you guys are pretty. It's like you guys are very inspiring. Um, so yeah, my socials will be down below. Oh yeah, see this is where I'm telling you. Client's point of view. So see that pointer finger? It's not straight like how I would want it to be. And another trick that I like to use is, I don't know if you, you should do this, but this is what I like to do to make it sharper, is I get my tip cutter and I just cut off the very, very tip of the nail after I've done what I needed to do for the bed of the nail. And it helps me get a super, super more sharp tip, especially when you cut off that extra acrylic that's just laying there instead of spending the time of filing it down. Um, sometimes I get the tip with the acrylic, sometimes I don't, but I just really like to do this in the end. Just cut the tip off and it'll be super sharp. But yeah, that's about it for this video. I'm going to add little videos and clips of what the nails came out looking like i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you guys want me to do in the future and yeah just stick around follow my journey don't forget to subscribe to me okay like you guys need to hype me up <laughs> no for real um but yeah i'll be done talking i'll let you guys finish the rest of the video until next time guys bye